Hey guys, Clyde here at Leechburg Lights. Hey, Gunther just uh, got the update here on one of the little uh, on the video that I just posted, and he has an awesome question here. Uh, I said something about a plug-in for the Beats, but I didn't uh, explain it very well. Um, and he wants to know: Do I need the plug-in uh, for the Beats for the timing marks? And uh, what what I want to do is let's go over to the Nutcracker releases uh, releases page. And if you go to 123.com, nutcracker, 123.com forward slash nutcracker forward slash releases. If you haven't saved this, go ahead and save this. You're going to use this a lot because this is where you come and get your most recent version of x -Lights. Um On this page, there's two, uh, two, um, two different links. One is for the Queen Mary Vamp plugin, and the other is for the Queen Mary Vamp plugin for Audacity. They're both for Audacity but this is the Linux version. This is a self-install Windows version and you want to click on this and go ahead and let it download. Once it's downloaded and I'm going to close out x -Lights here real quick. Once it's downloaded um, then open up open it up and go ahead and re go install this. And this is very simple, very short, very quick. Just select all the defaults everything should work just fine and uh, I don't need the readme and click finish now go into xlights and let's bring this up here there we go now when we create a new sequence we use usually use the wizard and you go ahead and click on here and we'll, we'll select musical sequence I'm just gonna pick a song and now at this point we have the option of uh, selecting our timing track or frames per second that we're needing for our sequencing. Now if you need more timing, in other words, if you need more specific timing, you can go to 25 milliseconds. You can, you can, I typically go with 20 frames per second or 50 milliseconds. I'm going to select the 50. And I'm not going to use any of the import data. I'm just going to go right here to timings. Now what, what Audacity VAMP plugins do um, the, is when you create a new timing track, automatically because we used the 50 millisecond timing we have also the option of of using the 100 millisecond timing now also the vamp plugins add in all of these other options see if you did choose the 25 millisecond timing that would be the option above the 50 millisecond timing and you would only have the 25 the 50 the 100 and the empty as available here and this box here is much smaller when you install the VAMP plugins, the box gets much wider so that you can read all of the descriptions from the VAMP plugins. Now, what do the VAMP plugins do? What they do is they analyze the waveform, the music, and they, f they calculate things out for us. Specifically, if you're interested in getting the beats, if you're familiar with the Lightarama uh, Tapper Wizard or the Beat Wizard, this is kind of the equivalent for us in X Lights, and it's a very automatic, very simple thing to do. And I'm going to just go ahead and select Bars and Beat Tracker Beats, and I'm going to click OK. I'm just going to go with the defaults there, and I just clicked OK again. And this takes a couple minutes, and what uh, what's going on is x -Lite is uh, going through the processing of the audio, the waveform, and now it's going to pull out all of the beats for us. So now it shows up there. Um, just for the heck of it, I'm going to go ahead and add this 50 millisecond timing. To me, this is not very useful, but most people will find it very refreshing or very uh, 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 helpful to see it for them because if they did come from a program such as Lightarama, they're used to seeing all these little tiny squares to help them do their on-off sequencing. So let's go ahead and click done and now we have, let's go ahead and get rid of the house preview here, and now we have our waveform and we have a couple new timing marks and what you'll notice is you can select the timing mark that you want to be active. This is the 50 millisecond timing and Obviously, this is a 30-second time. And now that you know the song we're playing, if I just zoom in, I'm just double-clicking here, and we're all the way scrolled over left here. This is the farthest left we can go, and if you look at our timing, is zero. And then we have a tick mark here, and uh, you can see... Um, we, if everywhere we click, that's where we can put a timing mark. That's what 50 millisecond timing does. If we had 25 millisecond timing, 
we could put a tick mark right here where this line is and this would give us a little bit more uh, spot on if you will um, but it creates a, a, a larger file because the ability to add more uh, timings now I'm gonna zoom out of here and just look at a 10 second spot for timing and as you can see let's move this over in the middle here let's go from 30 to 40 seconds 30 to 39 seconds that's close enough I, if I zoom out anymore it might it might be too much so yeah that's too much so 30 to 39 seconds we're looking at an entire area here this entire area that has how many uh, timing events that have been saved and are you really going to go in and drill down to this exact small spot here and sequence and drag a sequence element over here or uh, uh, an effect over into here and drop it into this square then drop one here then drop one here then drop one here and then drop one here all to do the same thing for example are you just gonna turn these all on it's just so much easier to turn it on and let me uh, let me throw the arches up here let me do uh, master view well let me do the mega tree that'll work or all groups those timings have disappeared let me show you how to get them back let's click on sequence elements let's add and there's our two we'll click add and then we'll close now we're we're in my we're in my all groups uh, group and here is are you going to really do this on 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 probably not going to do this you're probably going to do on and move out and click and drag and that's how long I want the whole arch on for um, so uh, that's just the basic of using the timing grid now the other the other thing that's available is beats okay so this is where it's more useful okay so I have a beat here and a beat here and a beat here these are all beats and what I was going through in the last video is I was showing how to do these arches I'll move it up and we'll do it very quickly now I know that we have beat number one two three four and if we go to there, there's one there's two measures there's three measures and there's four measures there's 16 beats right there now if I just go ahead and grab the single strand tool and I stretch it let me scroll over a bit and I change this so that my effect settings are at let's do the bounce again because that's what I was working on before and this is on all strands this isn't on the separate segments we're going to group arches um, let's do this uh, eight uh, eight times so you can see when you group the arches it's bouncing up and down up and down uh, because I the way I built this group um, in order for me to make the chases individual let's copy this and we'll paste it let's get rid of this and let's ungroup the arches there we go and now we can make the size bigger and you can tell this is going back and forth to the beat of the song we volunteer for the children grinning from ear to ear singing Christmas time is here so that's the simple way to get to the beats and what I want to show you now is I want to take a, a few more moments to go through and explain some of these vampire plugins so let's go back into this little cog here this is called the settings uh, button I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and on this screen here this is the sequence settings you see when you click create new sequence we're gonna to go to timings and these are the timings currently available in the selected view and we're gonna create new now we'll go through a couple of these obviously beats was very helpful bars is exactly the same as beats and but the difference is is instead of bars I'll close this out instead of instead of beats being one two three four it's only going to look at the one through four and make a timing that is from here to here and it's going to negate this which makes it easier for us to go through our segments and count okay I've got one bar two bars three bars four bars and then a measure 
uh, unfortunately, we don't deal with measures in the Vampire plugins. Usually a measure is uh, four to eight measures, which is a group of four. Um, so you have uh, a group of four measures, which is 16 beats. Uh, it, it makes it a lot easier to do your sequencing whenever you zoom out and you're working with a much larger area versus this smaller area when you zoom in. So remember again, x lights is all about sequencing to a model. It's not sequencing to a timing. Uh, not Well, it is about that, but it's more about using the model and how you add the effects to the model to create the effect on the entire display that you want. Not just sequencing one individual channel on your uh, on your sequencing grid so let's go back and go to settings and let's go through them oops let's I'll do it this way this is a shortcut timings and we'll go to new and then we'll select the uh, bars which I find very helpful I do this on every song that I do I usually will have a empty track I'll have the beats I'll have the bars. I'll never use one of these small ones. It's, almost, it's very impractical to use that small timing. And it's processing this audio. Now it's there. See, when you have the sequence edit, or whenever you have the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the sequencer tab selected and you create one in the sequence setting, it automatically loads it in there. So there's the bars. And now the other two that we're going to learn about, or that I'm going to teach you about, is. Uh, uh, and we're going to do the new one, which is, well, a new one. We're going to add a new one. And we're going to go to Note Onset. Um, Note Onset uh, has some options here. Once again, I'm just going to use the standard options. It's going to process the audio. And what Note Onset does is it recognizes every note that's in the song and tells you when it starts. And this is particularly helpful to use in certain circumstances whenever and and you notice that it just created a bunch of timing events uh, let's go ahead and turn everything off real quick so now we have nothing and let's go to a clean area of the page so if we go to note on sets now you're going to notice the beginning of all the notes uh, in a song that has a lot of beats you're going to get a lot of note on sets when you have a slower song a much slower song you're going to notice like right here there's not a lot of major notes it's very mel mel uh, melodic in this little section here and there's there's not much going on but if you want to do if this were a section right here that were highlighted for you that you really wanted to emphasize right after a slow uh, melodical area then you could you'd have the note you wouldn't have to go over here and click the T button to tap it on to turn it on so the note onset function is very helpful specifically in slower songs whenever there are less ma uh, when there are more major events this is a pop song so there's a lot of beats to it uh, the other thing that is the other timing that's very useful uh, is also uh, on in the plugin the uh, the one that I use a lot it's very useful but it's not functional and that is the uh, polyphonic transcription now if you go to Google and do what I did which is I was I get curious about things this usually takes a while here because the polyphonic transcription what polyphonic transcription does is it extracts every note in audacity and displays it as a timing but unfortunately it's not a full timing it sometimes what it's doing is it's finding every note that's physically played in the song and trying to transcribe it now as much as 50 millisecond timing is let's close out of this as as much as 50 millisecond timing is where you have all these timing events this is not useful to use whenever you're sequencing for a 10 second period of time or five second period of time polyphonics is nice for the same reason note onset is nice because sometimes you get some wonderful timing areas that you can highlight and select but you'll also notice there's some timing areas when you drill down to them I'll zoom in that are not connected where there's no note whatsoever being played that it can transcribe from through through transcription that you can't select that time you you can select an area a length of time and you can insert a function and that's nice because you have that option I'll go ahead and get rid of that um, 
but you can see over the, you can sequence over it because there's timing marks but not all timing marks are connected you'd have to make the connection yourself and sometimes each one of these connections those timing marks are actually multiple timing marks underneath of it where like that for example there's two timing marks on top of each other and the reason is is because there's two notes being played in the song at the same time there's multiple occasions where tra polyphonic transcription in a chord you're using three four and five notes at a time and let alone the three four and five different instruments being used to create the music that you're listening to so with that ridiculously long explanation and seeing how this is very functional to help you but it doesn't serve you because you're not able to utilize the whole area that you want to start at I want to start right here because that's where the event is but I can't because it's not letting me select it so this is why it's useful you go to your new timing track you notice where the event is because you can physically see it you line it up and you transpose it over to your new timing track your blank one and then you come over and you find the end of it and you say okay that's where it ends and you lay it down and those two marks are the marks that you be able to go in and utilize to create your sequencing and that's what I use polyphonic transcription for and this is what I use note onset for quite honestly do I use them uh, interchangeably and, uh, and, and usefully throughout the sequence note onset sure sometimes I do but to be honest most of the time I'm working in a a blank timing grid that I create as I go the beats timing grid or I work with the bars timing grid so I know this is a lot of explanation and a lot of babbling but the at the same token this is the theory and understanding that I have gotten myself from using the vampire plugins from X uh, from from uh, the Queen Mary vamps from uh, from audacity so uh, guys I hope this video is uh, informative and helpful uh, once again let me know what you think uh, feel free to comment and uh, thanks for watching again take care and talk